What's up, everyone? What's up, everyone? Welcome to Planet Xbox episode 17, Weapon Wheel Podcast, Weapon Wheel Edition, Weapon Wheel Patreon. Thank you guys for tuning in for yet another episode. I know we're a bit late today, but a couple things happened. We're going to get straight into the show. But before we do that, what's up to my co host, Gaming Attic, Lord Attic, ILP? What's up? Doing pretty good, man. Had a very eventful week. You know, some uh, I I've been drugged through the through the mud on Twitter. Oh, absolutely. You know, people, people don't like my uh, my Spider Man conversation that happened on Twitter, but we'll talk about that later on in the show. Not gonna go too much into that. We'll talk about that later. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lack of damage tweet, right? Oh, man, uh, Attic man. I know you. Yeah. You you've been you know uh, diving into a couple of games. What what you've been playing lately? Uh, one of them I can't talk about. Uh, I okay. have been playing uh, another one's the crew. I've okay, been playing a lot of the crew here lately. Um, I tried to get a, a code for Liza P, but like no one was really responding. So I guess uh, I was told by someone else that 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 particular game for some reason is just like. The devs, uh, the PR company that's doing that, are just like really fickle, mm. and uh, it was it was interesting. Well, um, it's coming to Game Pass. I know you get the early access if you pre-order like the premium edition. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually just looking for a game that can pry me away from Starfield. I've been playing a little bit of the crew. Um, reminds me of a lot of Forza Horizon Five. I mean, I love me some ubisoft but the crew motor fest is literally the bargain bin version of forza horizon they borrowed a lot they made the game smaller compared to driving across in previous crew games you drive across the country right you know the the, the big thing about the previous crew games were was scope uh, like how like how all the places you can go you can drive to you'll be in los angeles one day then you could drive all the way to new york and of course they would you know modify you know um the the scale um because you're not literally driving the entire uh country but uh they kind of you know manipulated so that you will um and that was the big selling point um but now they you they 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 made it smaller you're you're confined to what one island what freaking in hawaii they got some things that's inspired by japan it's it's a festival uh base sort of thing been there done that um, obviously from our Forza Horizon, uh, two Forza Horizon, three days. Um, but, um, good game. It's, it's, it's very polished. I like Ubisoft's games. Uh, I think the crew is a, it's a decent game, um, to play. It's a good time. Uh, I can't wait to dive, uh, more into it, probably stream it, um, uh, this weekend, probably before Weapon Will or, um, after probably put out an impressions video. Cause I haven't put out a video on my channel in a little bit. So I'll be covering the crew. Um, I know I'm like well past like embargo time. So I like, I'm probably missing out on the, the I'm probably missed out on the traffic, but I like to talk about video games in general, but, um, but the crew is pretty much the next game that I'm going to probably finagling with in between like now and, you know, and, and Liza P and whatnot. Um, I got a lot going on uh, uh, personally between like work is, you know, it's big financial times. We're working on like you know budgets and that takes a lot of time. My kids are in school and we're they're trying out for different sports teams and that's taking time. I'm, I'm, I'm literally becoming like more of a casual, like part time gamer, more of a full time parent, employee, whatever. Um, so that's take it's, it's going to be spotty. My gaming is going to be spotty probably for the remainder uh, remainder of the of the year. So uh, but right now, anything I've been playing, anytime I have a moment, an opportunity to play uh, a video game, it's, it's been Starfield and I've, I've beaten the game. I've beaten the game a couple times of New Game Plus did. Um, I'm on New Game Plus two. suspended that playthrough and started a completely new from scratch played through with a female character that I created and just really just making different decisions. And I'm able to collect some of the achievements that the game didn't give me during early access. And the game still feels fresh to me, man. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I haven't gotten sick of it. This is the, I think it's the most uh, I spent on a single time. I spent on a single game since, Oh my God, man, I'm trying to think, 
and, and this is like I said, I'm 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 absolutely hooked right now. Like I'm absolutely hooked on this game. Like I know I spent a lot of time in Halo Infinite. Spent a lot of time in like you know obviously Forza Horizon Five when you know those games uh, were fresh. Um, spent a lot of time with uh, Far Cry Six, uh, but and even like Wolong Fallen Dynasty, I put some uh, time in that. Elden Ring, we put a lot of time in that, but Starfield has probably eclipsed uh, that game. I think I spent Starfield is entering. You want you want to hear something funny, Attic? Starfield is entering NBA Live territory with me in terms of hours. Now, <laughs> now it won't never catch up because it, uh, the cheat with NBA Live is they stop. Uh, I played. I had to play NBA Live for like four years because they haven't made one since twenty eighteen or whatever. But in terms of realistically, outside of NBA Live, Starfield, I think is now my longest played game. I mean, I'm sure if I go back to like Halo Three or one of the earlier gears, it, it it may be be up there. But I think in current day, Starfield definitely my longest played game with multiple completions and i'm working on like a third completion and i'm probably going to go for the 100 percent completion because i i think i'm i'm i, I'm, I might be uh about 20 achievements away from that oh yeah here yeah uh, i've been you know playing a little bit of everything mm -hmm. I, I i do think that i'm gonna go back to persona finally because i still ain't beat persona mm -hmm. and um i want to finish that game once and for all yeah, I need to. I, I I don't know if I'll eventually go back. I think I've done three palaces. Did I do I did three or two of that game. But um, yeah, you know what I'm probably gonna do. Is, that's a play anywhere title. Yes, you can play it on PC. Okay, I'm probably gonna finish that game on a rogue. That's where I'll download it at. I'll download it on the Rogue Ally and just finish the game there and play it on times where I'm, I don't have to sit in front of my. I can just. Better question, did you pay Bond? Uh yes. Uh he was paid out of the weapon will uh Patreon payout. So I I, I was a hundred and uh uh twenty dollars shy uh this time light on uh my my payout because of the Starfield review scores not hitting a ninety. And um I'm gonna rant today at some point today. I think I might have ranted last week, but I'm gonna rant again. Um Let's go ahead and get that over with now. I can't stand gaming journalists. I can't stand none of them, especially the ones out of the UK. Um, every, every Microsoft and Bethesda had every right to withhold review co codes from those websites because the scummy things that happen is that within three days of them, after they bullied Microsoft and Bethesda of getting the codes because mm, they're not giving us codes. <laughs> they ran a guilt trip. Social media started tweeting about it. Microsoft and Bethesda eventually gave them the codes before, you know, the game release and all of them within three days of getting their codes gave the game a six. I don't even think all these uh, uh, outlets even completed the game. They all oh, gave they all in, within three days managed to give the game a six. Really? Yeah. You know, what's crazy about that, though. <clears throat> you know. How many times I've uh, the media specifically the media mm -hmm. they they tell me you're not entitled to codes how many times the media has came out and just said that sentence you're not entitled to code but the moment some of these medias don't get a code we see how they act you know um there's been multiple times i didn't get a code for a game and it didn't affect like it didn't affect what I would give it as a score. Now I'm not sent, I'm not gonna just openly say these people gave it a six because they didn't get a code. But what I will say is what I was sensing was very like I'm upset because I've been given this privilege for years and this game didn't get it and I feel I feel away. Now I don't know if they took that too far. And you know, do stuff like, you know, review bomb something. But what I will say is, it's just convenient that all those studio, all those people that got that didn't get codes, they all gave them six out of tens almost. Yeah, it was like it. It was almost like it was 
a retaliation score. It's like, all right, now that we did it, now we're gonna go. In. It's are are you, are you using this, the the right mic? Because I feel like you're a little loud. Am I am I loud? I yeah should be. Let me just double check. Um, because I when I listened to it on the playback, um, it, it we, doesn't feel like we were both censored. listen out equally. But um, let me um maybe I. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. I apologize, everyone. Um, but it looks like it's it's showing me Mike Elgato Wave One. That's what I'm using. The uh, all right, th- uh, then turn down your bass a little bit because I feel like I'm I'm picking up okay too much of your voice. What about now? Am I better now? Because I'm looking just at a little bit more, just a little bit more. All right, because I'm not even touching a yellow now. Just give me a heads up. <laughs> okay, maybe it's just my headset. Okay, cool, cool beans. Um, yeah, no, I think they're um. I think they're they're being. I think what's happening is that these journalists, and I said it before. I feel like these there's individuals who are trying to get their big break. You can make. I'm telling you, Twitter. This monetizing Twitter has made trolls out of everyone's trying to get paid, and the only way to get paid. I will agree. I will agree with you on the Twitter thing. Negative. So you got these journalists. It's like, you know. I work for a big corporation. If I like, this is the this is the opportunity think, for them to really explode. You think they're trying to become more influencers? Yes, yes, yes. Like I feel you on that. Like for example, like uh, Paul Tassie. Like I'm not now. I'm not knocking Paul Tassie or anything like that. But I know Paul Tassie is Paul Tassie. I don't know who he worked for anymore. I know he works for some outlet, but I know him as an individual more than I know his outlet. You get uh, it? I would say Gene's like that too. G- Gene like that, and then who's the dude? The the other dude from the UK. Oh my God, David. Uh, what's his name? He's blonde. He always every time Xbox has a preview, he does like a video on like Twitter showing off the uh, UI and stuff like that. Um, the new feature. He's a journalist too. He works for um, I forget which one he uh works for, but Jess uh, Corden's like that too. Yeah, Jess Corden. I mean, I know Windows Central, but I know Jess Corden more, right? So you got the Ryan McCaffrey. We know, but IGN, but we know him. We and we know uh, um, uh, Destin uh, Legary. Like we know Colin. You know what I mean. So you're getting more people. We know uh, what's the picklehead dude I can't stand. Uh, that we used to work for Kotaku. He always does his investigative oh, Jason journalism. Schreier. Yeah, we know who Jason uh, uh, Schreier is, right? So what, what, what you're saying is mm-hmm. a lot of the you feel like a lot of these media outlets. Mm-hmm maybe see an end to the journalists and stuff and they're trying to like build an alternative revenue source that they could they mm-hmm. they can go off of if they have to yeah or it's, maybe just like leave these media outlets mm-hmm. entirely behind that that yeah. could happen it's too. a combination of both things because you you got journalism because the thing is there's no money in in gaming websites you know you gotta the only way to get paid is through advertising mark uh getting clicks Getting and didn't seeing advertisers wanting to advertise on your page so you can get those clicks and that's how the, the revenue comes. But at the end of the day, if you think about it, it's like okay, there's another way to get paid on Twitter, right? You know, we could post our article, we could post a segment of the article, and that's another way to fund it. So if headlines obviously is only get the clicks, negative uh, um, outlet, uh, negative uh, clicks. Will come to it's going to drive the revenue, drive the traffic, and drive the engagement. You got got it that way, and then you got it on the individual point. You got, like I said, individuals who work for websites that want to be known as the individual and get paid that way. You know what I mean? And and then they can literally break off from the platform they work for and do their own thing and be the and be the individuals the business, right? Colin uh, Moriarty, he's the, the he's the individual that is the business. Destiny, yeah, he works for IGN, but he's able to thrive as the individual. He does things separate from IGN, and he's being known uh, from that. Now, it helps that he works for IGN because it gave him a, a upper hand or a, a leg up on a lot of things. They gave him a fast track. Uh, a fast track to growth on YouTube, a fast track to growth on Twitter. I mean, you could look at Elena Pierce the same way. Yeah, like she, IGN was able to to give her enough of a a name to where she could leave IGN and do other stuff. Yeah. So because you could argue if she never would 
have worked at IGN and, and became, you know, the the figure she was at IGN, mm -hmm. she might not have ever gotten that job working at uh, St. Monica. Sony, Sony Santa Monica. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah. So, and I think what happened was it was just the perfect storm, right? Uh, Twitter introduced the monetization is, is been going on for the last couple months. Starfield, the biggest IP in so many years for, especially for Xbox and Xbox is always controversial. It was something where like Xbox news, Xbox may not be as popular as PlayStation, but damn it, the commentary around Xbox is the most popular thing to do. It's like, it, and, and then people know it, people know it. So it was like the perfect storm coming in. It's like, dudes, people's careers, just like people's career launch careers based off this Activision um, deal versus the CMA and the FTC, you know how many YouTubers got big based off just covering that and individuals that got big based off covering that? Um, that case I heard, like, I heard Plume Network got uh, like, like, yeah, he, had a lot of his growth during yeah. the ABK, yeah, time. quadrupled his growth. Uh, I, I, I lost out on the majority of the yeah. ABK thing, unfortunately, yeah, him, and that's how Destin broke 100k. As quick as he did, he could literally exclusively covered the ABK deal for like months. And um, now with Starfield obviously being this pol polarized thing and, and people are trying to do whatever they can. Um, I don't know. Some of it is personal vendetta, but some most of it is just it's just clicks. And um, and then you got the secondary people feeding off of it by. You know, every time a negative article is written, you got, you know, figureheads like the Red Dragon and a few other people who've who's been able to profit off of the negativity um, because of the engagement uh, payout that Twitter does. And they're pretty much it's everybody's like feeding each other. It's like an ecosystem, right? It's like the seas, right? Like the ocean is no matter how ferocious sharks are, right? The ocean needs sharks, right? And they need the otters, they need krill, they need all that shit so everything can work. But um, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Um, you know, I declared I don't know what game is going to change it. Um, I, there, we still got a couple games to come out. We know Spider Man's cooking. We got Liza P is, is showing well. Uh, Mortal Kombat's out. Um, personally, I don't know if there's any game that is beating is is, is game of the year for me other than Starfield. I like I've had a lot of games that I like this year. Uh, such as Wolong Fallen Dynasty was my initial game of the year. I had a lot of fun in that game. Had a lot of fun with uh, Dead Island Two. Loved, actually loved it. I, it was it was a classic uh, beginning to end experience. Loved the graphics. Loved the combat. Amazing game. Was one of my favorite games. Along with Bramble, I enjoyed. Starfield just has me hooked. Like for a game, I'm gonna take this cat in another room. Keep talking. That's fine. For a game that. A Bethesda game for a Bethesda game. Um, I I don't I don't know. It's crazy. I even think it's what well, I was surprised that I would even like you know like it. I when Starfield was coming out, I didn't think I would. I thought I was like I would try it, and I would probably drop it because I probably wouldn't understand it or it just wouldn't be for me. I thought that would have been the case for uh, uh um Starfield for me, but once I got my hands on it, start to play it. You know, get past some hours, start to get through some quests and multiple quests, multiple factions, and that drive was still there to play it. Uh, I just wanted to continue to play, it. and it's to the point where I've beaten the game twice, and I still want to play the game. I've gotten into arguments with my wife because of this stupid game, um, it, which is which is crazy. But Adi, before we continue on, let's get into some of these Patreon questions. We got a couple of them uh, that we can answer. Um, and uh, we definitely appreciate it. I know we missed out on a couple of Patreon questions a couple, due to BG not posting them, but first question comes from my truck nuts. He says, W meetup. I wish y'all played Madden. Who do y'all think would have won? Uh, my truck, I don't know if you were following, we had everything on YouTube and Twitter. We didn't stream Madden, but we did play Madden. Me and Jack Move played three games of Madden. I won the first game um, by a lot. Um, Jack Move won the second game by a lot. And I eventually won the third game by um, a, 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 a mile. None of, none of the games went to like the, the fourth quarter. We've kind of like, you know, actually, I think the third game went to the fourth quarter. I, I don't think we 
played it out. Um, but I beat Jack Move pretty handedly um, in Madden, uh, two games uh, to one. Um, but yeah, we played. Um, me and BG live actually fairly close, so we're probably gonna meet up again at some point. Um, now that you know, I know we live fairly close. Probably try to connect Bond. Uh, Bond was pretty salty about the whole matter. Um, well, I'll be too. Huh? I said I'd be too. Dude, like we thought, like the way that, like I thought he was out, right? And then at the, the time that we ended up meeting up, remember we did the podcast, right? And then mm-hmm. after the podcast, I had to go see him. By the time we ended up meeting up, it was like, it was like damn near ten o'clock. Bond's like damn near I, grandpa at this point in time. So I hear you, but the 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 offer should have went out regardless. Like, he should have been paying attention to the chat. I feel you, <laughs> but at the same time, like this is the first time you guys ever met in person. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've met BG in person before. No, nah, this is the first time I met BG in person. Oh, I've met BG in person before. Yeah. So that I met him at an E3 once. So it's it's interesting, man. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I'd feel away if I was born. So yeah, I mean, I, we can do it. Me, the crazy thing is, me and Bond. I, I believe, I believe, me and Bond are. I think me, Bond, and BG are also in the same state. So we can a- always meet up at any point. Bond was wait- actually Bond has been waiting for the the Patreon to hit 500 members before we do that. So I mean that could still happen. Um, Agent 1245 says, "Is an 83 on Metacritic for Starfield a disappointment move?" Well, I can imagine Starfield is making a decent amount of money for Microsoft just based off the Steam numbers. I do think that in the back of Phil Spencer's head, he must be at least somewhat annoyed that after seven billion dollars. In a delay that cost Xbox a whole 2022, the best that Bethesda could come up with is utter trash with Redfall in a game that critically double digits behind God of War Ragnarok's Metacritic score, which is 94 for reference. Uh, you want me to answer this yeah, first? Go ahead. I don't particularly care. I think it's a shame because I don't think that's an 83 Metacritic game. I just don't. I think it's a shame. You know, you can make the argument that Microsoft keeping the game away from some of the the year reviewers were uh, is what ultimately led to that review because I I feel like I do feel like something was weird. Like it would be different if like one of them rated the game decent, one of them rated it bad, and then one rated it like neutral. They all gave it a 6 essentially. Mm-hmm. so it's just it feels like they all came together it's like okay what are you gonna uh give it so they can't punish all of us it, it, it is what it is you know i i feel i feel bad for the devs but at the same time smooth mm-hmm. i could see why people would would give this like an a out of 10 and that's essentially what it got so i think the the reviews are fair if it's truly an eight but if people gave it sixes to make gaming statements, that's where I'm like, okay, may, maybe that's unfair. But I, I do think an 83, it's it's not ideal, but I can understand why it would score around that area. Um, Again, like, I can understand an 8 out of 10. I'm not mad when people scored an 8 out of 10. It's the sixes that's driving me insane. Because it's like, in no universe, I see this game a six or four. I don't see the. I honestly, I, I find a hard to have. I'm, I'm finding a hard time this finding this game being under an eight. I know it's not a perfect ten, of course. Don't get me wrong, but I just think I just don't. I just don't see it right. You know what I mean? I feel like the game just does so much. I'm like, what? Like all the stuff that people are saying. It takes twenty hours to get good. That's a lot. I think we were in. The, I remember I told you, please wait for me before you start the game, mm-hmm. right? I it did not take me nowhere near twenty hours for the game to get fun for me or to get good. You know what I mean? Like I'm just curious to see what people did soon as they got out of the freaking cave. I don't. Like, I don't like. I think a lot of that is Bethesda's fault because. The tutorial for that game was atrocious. They didn't really explain how things work for the most part. You know, when you do your little scanner thing, you know, I told three people how to dock at stations. So mm-hmm. I can't imagine 
on the mass scale how many people had that issue. You know, it, it, a lot of it is I look like they should have did a better job, and and some of it they did. You mm-hmm. know. I saw people complaining about, okay, they don't really explain how to to fly a ship. Well, if you do the Vanguard missions, they teach you in that. Yeah, teach you within the first... But yeah, yeah. they do push you to go talk to the Vanguard people at the beginning of the game, but you're not obligated to. Mm-hmm. So I can understand why people are like, look, I didn't do that because I didn't do that. I learned the hard way how to fly. So I can understand from that perspective... You had a lot of people going in space, had no clue how to fly a ship, really. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe they should have made you do a couple missions or something, like off the off the off yeah, the but bat. That, but the or, problem with that, that's a, so against Bethesda. People want to come and, out and, of the and cave that, and explore. Oh, I want to go and, there. Want to go there? We don't want to. And that's answer. fine. So we don't so, want to so, have an, a, a, so, a designated place to go. That's that was and, the complaint. And, that's fine. So what they should have done is they should have had like vanguard mission and they should have like a little message pop up that says look there's going to be a lot of tutorials on how the game functions in this in these couple quests mm-hmm. you don't have to do them but we recommend you do them mm-hmm. yeah. they didn't do none of that they're like we're gonna you now they showed you how to do stuff but it was like one time and just some props that came up you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. a lot of games will physically make you do it to learn it and and i think that that is where people are talking about the 20 hours because when you start realistically learning how to play this game Mm -hmm. you're like 10 hours in like what all this game has to offer Mm -hmm. i mean they don't even tell you about shielded cargo unless you do a quest Mm -hmm. which is now yep now you that's definitely a a mindset that where it's like okay you know that's how life would actually be if you don't if you're not in that but so it's a video game so i can understand why some people played this and was like they got frustrated and you know i know a few people that went through it playing this game like their opinion on it changed a couple times the biggest thing i had is like you said the sixes the fours because those don't feel genuine yeah, to me yeah the, the those feel like that that was to, to make a statement mm-hmm. now i could be wrong and that's fine because at the end of the day i don't care uh but all the only thing i will say it is a shame that i that a game like this that i feel realistically sitting between an eight six eight seven eight mm-hmm. five around that area mm-hmm. it's a shame it's an eight three and it could drop again there's still other reviewing websites that haven't done it yet so my question to you, Smooth, is should studios and should people, uh, publishers like Microsoft, Bethesda, should they let reviewers hold their game ransom on the Metacritic score? No, I think what they have to do is they, they, somebody has to change it, right? So we got to they got to make it where either Metacritic doesn't count or what you do is you, I think all publishers should be able to withhold games from certain for to constant abusers what i would do is i'll sit there as a publisher and look how how many of these people reviewed rated my games you also got to factor in console war um like how many people like how how are the websites involved in that and you just kind of have to just start you know banning like you know what back in the day do like my knowledge of gaming uh, as far as game reviews was very like you know limited I used to literally just rely on Game Informer because that was the monthly magazine I got. And I and I thought Game Informer's magazine's reviews were relatively fair. Nintendo Power, at EGM, Electronic Gaming Monthly. Um, like, if I'm Xbox, shit. I'm only giving my shit to only Xbox sites and maybe See. out of respect, uh, obviously IGN and maybe and Game Informer and everybody else can kiss my ass. <laughs> that's, See, that's here's the thing, though. Look, hold up, hold up. We're in a slippery slope. Yeah. Uh, because then I don't agree with that. <laughs> now, I agree with, I do agree to a point what Bethesda did. They're like, look, these, these outlets. Mm-hmm. What do they realistically do? Mm-hmm. They sit around and pretty much like intake console war stuff. Like mm-hmm. you know, we can look at something like Digital Foundry. Digital Foundry is a good service 
to to the industry. But when you break Digital Foundry down, when it comes to consoles, not PC, because mm-hmm. PC I feel like it's more relevant. But when it comes to consoles, what does Digital Foundry actually do? Nothing. They just show you what stuff runs. Mm-hmm. So it's just like I could see it from that perspective. That's like, look, you know, they don't review games really, you know. It, it, and obviously, we saw your game or review a game because uh, that's it, that's not Digital Foundry. And it's just like you know, if if they have particular issues with people in the industry mm-hmm. and they choose to blacklist people, to me. Or not even blacklist, just not give them access to Starfield. I feel like there's a bigger issue on how them not getting the code was received than the code itself. Mm -hmm. Because once again, I see these same outlets, maybe not the individuals that had anything to do with the Starfield thing, all the time on Twitter, you're not entitled to a review. It's easy to speak from that kind of mindset when you're in the VIP groups, when you get the stuff, when you don't have to worry about, am I going to get early access so I don't have to kill myself trying to get this coverage out on time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's easy to say stuff like that. And then when you look at something like this, if these companies and these websites truly fell away and they and they review bombed the game as a statement. My question to you is should Bethesda be scared and be cautious more of stuff like that? And so is Xbox and give those people the code because it could happen again. Or should they just open the, 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 the gate and just let anyone review that, that chooses to review the game? Or, That's my question. Or, or they can pull a high fi rush. And just and just shadow drop it, but does it come because not really shadow people, drop it, but more so put the embargo, everyone gets it at the yeah, same yeah, time. Every, every, everybody gets it at the same time at and at the time of release. <laughs> but see, here, 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 and, 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 hey, you got, you and what's funny is they've done that before. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think my biggest issue is like it. It's just a it's a weird gray area because what. What do you expect Bethesda to do? Because at that point, if you have enough following, mm-hmm. you're untouchable. You know, Bethesda can't stand on moral grounds to them. Obviously, what I might be considered moral and what them might be considered moral might be different. Mm-hmm. But their moral grounds they can't stand on because these reviewers will use the Metacritic score to get back at them. So it's just like, you know, it, it's a it's a shitty thing, man. You know, I think it's one of those things where it's like, if you choose to go this direction and, you know, kind of cherry, because I don't think, I don't agree with the rumors around saying they cherry pick people. No, they didn't I cherry think, pick. They, they cherry I think they who didn't, didn't want to give. Yeah, I, I think that there were just outlets that they didn't particularly vibe with for some way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, maybe it's how they've uh, they've spoken about the company. Maybe it's political stuff because I know that goes along like heavy, mm-hmm. like political statements. That's why they didn't get the game. Doctor Disrespect didn't get the game because of his political statements on the uh, the Call of Duty stuff. So it's just like I don't think that they just say these people will give us good reviews. Let's give them the game and not everyone else. I think it was we're going to give the game to people that we feel have the following to benefit us and the people that we feel have been fair with criticism about this game. And unfortunately, a lot of the industry, they, they pander to PlayStation a lot. Yeah. And sometimes when you pander to PlayStation, it looks like you're, you know, you're, you're talking down to Xbox. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm just an influencer of like 5,000 subs. I don't, what the fuck do I know? You know what's but crazy, it, crazy? And I still got to answer this dude's question as well. But um, the crazy thing is, it's still an 87 on PC. It's like no one else reviewed it on PC. Right? Yeah, but like, but the thing is, it's like, all right, so... That's the one guys... we go by smooth. We go by the 87, not the 83. Yeah, <laughs> but the, the thing is, it's like, why is it like, really? the You guys took the anger out on the... Pretty much, pretty much like they're taking the anger out on... It's an Xbox versus PlayStation thing. That's what I said. Because it's 87 
is an 87, which is about fair. That's a fair score for the game over. I played it on PC and Xbox. To me, there's no virtually no difference outside of perfor- uh, performance variation. But the thing is, it's not that it performs bad on um, Xbox. It's the same game. Is there, so my thing is, it's, it's not worth, it's, the thing is, is, you can't say a, 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 a freaking 87 versus 83. What makes it an 83 on Xbox? It's the same exact game. It's a, it, 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 I hope they, what they're, these, what these fucktars are doing are not trying to, I hope they're not trying to uh, sabotage its game of the year potential. It's to me, I think it's truly a game of the year nominee. It, wow. it, it's a game of the year what? nominee. It's too it's too good of a would game you, not to be. Like I don't would understand you be ups- it. Would you be upset if it didn't get nominated? Oh, I'll be I'll be highly upset if it get nominated. Okay. It, it wouldn't change a, my impact. Okay, hold, hold, game, hold, hold I, on. My game of the year has never lined up with game of the year naturally. So I would be upset if they gave it to something I truly didn't believe deserved over it. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh do I think Resident Evil 4 is a better game than Starfield? No, but I can see why that would be given over Starfield. I don't think they would do give I, it. Yeah, but go ahead. Do I think Final Fantasy 16 is a better game? No. Do I? Can I see why they would? Also, no. I don't. In no way, shape, or form does Final Fantasy yank Starfield out of Game of the Year contender. It just doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. Not one outlet rated this game a 60 on PC. What? Oh, and, yeah. and just to mind you, just to mind you, the PC version has a partnership with AMD, and it purposely doesn't have DLS to support ray tracing, none of that shit, and, and it runs poorly yeah. on Nvidia based cards, which is the most popular cards, and they still no one, st- everyone still gave it a seventy or better. What? It's just one of those things. That's man. crazy. You know, I don't agree with it. I don't. Um, but you know. What comes around goes around because I won't be doing it. But what do you think will happen next month? Was uh, Spider Man when they give they give uh, the yeah. game a ninety four? No, I don't think Metacritic wise it's going to get hit. But I I do think that What's game crazy? by the What's Xbox the community is going to get dragged. Like if there's any flaws with that game, that community is going to find it. I'm listening. You still there? Yeah, yeah. I had to turn off the TV. It started playing, but on its own. Hear me? So, you know, I can understand why people feel a way about certain things. I can. But at the same time, if these people did use the system to to send a message, shame on them. Yeah. Fuck them. All right. So, the next, uh, so he said, he said, is an E3 Metacritic, uh, Metacritic for Starfield disappointment? Yes, it's, disappoint- it's a disappointment. Not overall. I don't think the game's a failure or a flop. Obviously, it's clearly not a flop. Six million players within a day. Uh, it's the best-selling game on Xbox Store. Uh, the top One of the top games on Game Pass. Top game on PC. Uh, people, they stopped sharing the Steam numbers because it kept growing. It kept growing, and it kept being consistent because there's no major drop-off. I can't hear you. You're a mute addict. Um, you're a mute addict. If you're, I don't know if you're trying to talk, addict, but you're muted. Oh, but um, the the um, I was about to say, I don't think it's a failure. Or, or like, I'm disappointed in 83 because I know truly it's not an 83. It's not an 8.3. It's not a 60. It's not a 66. It's not a seven. Um, that's why I'm disappointed because it's what's bringing that score to an 83. It's the 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 ten sixes that. These guys decided to do because they want to take their vengeance and vendetta out against uh, Microsoft, Bethesda, and Xbox. Um, so that's what makes it really disappointing is the fact that sure, eighty three on for average game is in, in no in eighty three, but in eighty three for this game, it, it's just it's just not true uh, for the game. It's like I don't it's, think it's justified. It's I don't. not. It's not justified. If it remained in eighty seven, eighty eight. Sure, I'm, it's not the 90 that I thought it uh, was going to get, but it, it it's pretty damn close, and it's it's pretty fair. The PC score is really indicative of the real score. The 83 is a bunch of people trying to purposely trying to bring this game down because they're using their power and their influence in the industry, and they suck ass for it. Um, let's see. Uh, you said something about Phil Spencer's. He was like. He's like, I do think that in the back of Phil Spencer's head that 
I don't think I think Phil Spencer's happy uh, with the game overall. And at the I think the they day, might be slightly disappointed they, with think, how the Metacritic score thing but happened, thing but I think they, overall they, you, they're okay with what what happened with Starfield. Yeah, they, but the thing is, they're not mad at what they, it's not to the fault of their own. Todd Howard and Bethesda created a polished, awesome game, uh, uh, one of the best games this year in a stacked year. I they made a good game. So if I'm Phil Spencer, I'm disappointed to the fucktards that I uh, allow get review scores that didn't deserve it because they still got this major beef and hate towards Xbox for some damn reason. Um, um, okay, so next question is from Nick Nicknack. He says, hello, guys. I just started binging Planet Xbox at work, and despite some of the stuff you talk about going under my head, because I don't care too much on the business shit. It's still nice to listen to. Anyway, here's one of many future wild questions that I'll be asking in the asking you. Wait a minute, let me read this. He says, anyway, here's one of the many future wild questions that I'll be asking you in the future. Would you rather eat a sub sandwich made out of meat of a covenant alien you just recently killed? Eat a sub sandwich made out of the meat of a locust you just recently killed. Or eat a sub sandwich made out of the meat of a random 14 human NPC you just recently ran over. Just make it more fun if you choose the 14 NPC. It ends up being the most delicious sandwich out of the group. That's disgusting. But I'm not going to pick the Forza because that's a human and that would be cannibalism. Um... I'm going to say, oh my God. When I think of aliens, I think of like plasma, acid. I think of like uh, melting, like poison. I'm going to say the locusts. I bet locusts. you locusts taste good. No one's just ever tasted it. I don't know. I I, I think it's it's up for debate. You know what? What? It, I think it could just change depending on. First off, who's cooking it? <laughs> is it like? <laughs> is it like environments that I that you're going through in like these yeah. actual games? Like, is it just you're cooking it because you want to cook it or because you have to cook it? Because I think these change the scenarios. Like, have I not ate for a week? Yeah. Because you know, it, as much as you don't say it, you know, there's been very famous parts in history where people became full-blown cannibals when they ain't ate for three or four weeks. So it's just like, people be surprised at what you'll do if you get hungry, you know? That's true. Uh, they, they're like laughing like crazy in my background. They're watching Tubi um, and there's like, you know how, I don't know if you watch anything from Tubi. Uh, the stuff is like really like low budget. But um uh, but yeah, that's it for the question so far. Appreciate all of you, Nick Knack, Agent Twelve Forty Five, and 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 my truck nuts. Uh, what else did we have going on? I know there's a, I know Tokyo Game Show is taking place Thursday. You got any expectations for that, Attic? Um, I got a couple things that I, I'm very interested in. One thing is I want to see if Final Fantasy VII Remake finally gets announced for Xbox. Uh, and the only reason I'm, that I'm breathing any a little bit of life into this because I feel like we something happened and I feel like the damage between the relationship was damaged between Microsoft and Square Enix and it's looking like that's been remedied. So I'm wondering if that's been done now so like it's think, okay you think square enix has been withholding final fantasy 7 remakes yes remake yeah. off of xbox rather than playstation well it, it's 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 not it i think it's like one of those things where it's like it's not that they're withholding it it's like look these people we don't really fuck with them like that in general and why would we bring something to the competition of people that actually we do fuck with so i i don't because here's so I was told, and I think we, uh, you know, you've seen the same rumors that that Final Fantasy VII remake was running off of uh, Switch Two prototype stuff. So mm. why is that happening? 
So clearly, if if it is if that's true, and I think I think that rumor is true. Was it? Is it being ran on Switch Two because it's not locked down to PlayStation? Because why would it be there then? You're talking yeah. about PlayStation made an, an arrangement and go everywhere but Xbox. I assume that's that's plausible, but not likely. Because yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake could have easily been put on their streaming service. You had plenty of other games that went to Switch for, in a streaming service, but it never was. So it, it's just like if that game was being te- if that game was being tested for the Switch Two, to me that opens up a little bit more of a door that makes me think that they're exploring other stuff. And let's let's keep it real too. Like they're they're not doing too well financially. You know they 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 have failed on multiple games financially and critically. And the only games that are doing well to a, to a point is Final Fantasy. So it's just like, are you going to continue to? It's like that. It's like that meme where uh, where it shows the rope wrapping around someone. It's like sometimes the best thing to do is let go because holding on is bringing you more pain. Yeah. So it's like, are you going to continue holding on to that <laughs> PlayStation rope? That it, it, there's nothing wrong. Like I, I do think the PlayStation people are showing up and buying it, mm-hmm. but it's. It's especially PC. It's hurting them more to keep that off PC, Xbox, and Switch than it would be for them to put it on those platforms. And and I think that after we've seen all these rumors, that has become very clear. And I will, I think, expect to see that change. Uh, part of me does think that you're gonna you're gonna see that. And that's why I think remake can come out. And you know what's you know what's crazy is let's say they when they went and had that deal because if you look it said on rebirth three months or six months yeah or something but they like did the that. same thing on the first game it, but but we don't know what happened that caused the game to not come to xbox so maybe it was supposed to and maybe it just never got finished because of some kind of bad blood or something, or maybe a game pass back fell through. We don't know. But what would be interesting is that Tokyo Game Show, <laughs> they announced Remake, and then after Rebirth comes out for PlayStation, it gets announced it's coming to Xbox in six months. <laughs> like, mm. I, I mean, mean odds of that happening is very slim. Uh, but... It's just, I think something about me, just because the way they're just moving smooth, I don't know if you've seen this, like, they're they're really picking up the fact that they're going to be at the Tokyo Game Show this year. But they did the same thing last year. They did a, Phil Spencer did a mini video, right? Didn't he do it, like, last year? But but they announced some stuff last year. And, and we've seen we've seen them be very more, you know, close and working with them mm-hmm. we we seen uh you know the final fantasy 14 come to xbox uh, next year like mm-hmm. we're seeing developments that make me think at the very least we see octopath traveler 2 on xbox at the very yeah. least and i would say the best case scenario is you see remake yeah, and maybe you don't see rebirth on xbox until until uh the the final game comes out but i don't think that's the case this the 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 thing is what they need to do is um one i don't think these if they're doing a timed exclusive on um final fantasy i think for like three months at that point i mean why would xbox be restricted beyond that point it wouldn't make any sense i think if final fantasy 7 remake is going to come to xbox and if they're going to they got two options right you bring out you unless it's coming this year maybe this year for the first game right integrate right and then they bring the rebirth in may of next year or you wait until may of next year and bring both of them out at the same time for the xbox and switch assuming switch is a q2 release oh we got a apparently that dude that updated saying they had 30 million plus mm-hmm. yeah, he, on his uh linkedin he updated again and change the 30 to 25. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, because that was the topic point, too. The Game Pass hitting 30 million. Now, this post was prior to the release of Starfield, correct? This, mm-hmm. was, uh, this was August. 
Is it August? Yeah. All right. So what do you think? When do we get the next milestone and where do you think Microsoft is at now? By the Video Game Awards, they'll make a public announcement saying it hit 30 million over. Why? Why the Video Game Awards? I just feel like that's a good time to do it. I would say at the close of the Acti- Activision Blizzard. That might, that's possible. Here's my question to you. Mm-hmm. Let's say they the the Activision deal goes through mm-hmm. and Call of Duty doesn't generate the Game Pass subs that they initially thought and they're having to think about what the future for Xbox is without everything revolved around Game Pass. What what kind of like conversation do you think would be going on there? Cuz I mean we we got to be honest like it's been a little bit mm-hmm. And there still looks like they're they're in that twenty million range for for quite a while. Well, they're they're they're, they're already surpassed fifty million now that the Game Pass core. I, I feel you on that, yeah. but that that that's just a band aid. That's it's not a band aid, but overall. hey, it, it it changes it tremendously. Yeah, but it it changes it, but it it changes the perception, but not the, the realistic yeah, going yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. So, do you think that if these games start hitting really good, mm-hmm. do you think that they they can go on like a, a six month uh, duration with it not being in Game Pass. Mm, no, I don't think they can do. Uh, they can't go back on their Game Pass thing, even though Microsoft they can because they've done so. They've gone back on things that they were we thought they were committed to. Um, but so, I think what happens but, is they pretty much try to just. I think they've been doing a good job on these early access promotions, right? Uh, where they were like, you know what? There's still money to be made in, in, in selling these games. Um, and I think I think Starfield also taught them a lesson because they we saw an increase in the Xbox sales, right? I, I think, like, to me... I'm listening. And, and I think we've had this conversation before. Mm-hmm. I truly believe as long as these games hit, they they could completely hit the uh, the the rever- the reverse Uno card. Nah, I don't know. Yeah, it man. Could, it, look, is it going to be PR fucking nightmare? Yes, it, it, it they'll be the highlight of every joke. But we got to be real here. Like if if Fable hits, uh, Hellblade hits, Avowed hits, Elder Scrolls Six hits. Uh, Outer Worlds 2 hit, Perfect Dart hits, whatever, you know, the Doom devs I is hitting. Like, how many of those, like, what kind of realistic stance do you think gamers are going to have? Oh, I got to buy games again, so I'm not going to buy the games I want to play. Like, let, let, let's be honest here. Like, they'll get laughed out of the st- uh, out of the building, but I think as long as they deliver the games, eventually that that narrative will go away. Because mm. at know, the end that, of the day, that would have a negative impact on also their partners. Because the thing is, is that the reason the, the thing is, is that people will subscribe to Game Pass because, all right, we know their big games are going to be there. And with that, with that fact, that allows partners, a trip, uh, some AAA partners, some AA partners, but some just, indies to get in there knowing that, hey, there's a lot of subscribers there. Because Starfield's in there, I can put my game in there, and by default, if you play, think about this. Lies the P, new IP, right? It's borrowing from the Souls formula, right? If they don't know how, they, it, it may sell, may be successful, but on Xbox, they're like this. Okay, Starfield just came out. A bunch of people just subscribed to Game Pass, and we're coming at a time where maybe, maybe 20% of those people that subscribe to Game Pass uh, for Starfield, you know, maybe they've beaten the game. Maybe they're on the verge of dropping the game and my game comes in right after. Like, they, they, they're not going to cancel, right? They already paid for the month. They're going to, you know, it's it's I don't, it's that opportunity uh, cause. I, it, it has an impact, uh, a, a catastrophic impact, not on just uh, consumers, it, but also it, it, other de- uh, game what, what, developers. What I'm, the reality I'm referring to is if Game Pass just isn't doing what they initially thought. They're not growing in size that they mm-hmm. feel is comfortable making these kind of deals. They're just not growing. So it's like, to me, in that scenario, it's either 
you you close down or you or you cut Game Pass. No, nah, no. Nah, because nah. but hold, hold, hold up, if they're not making money off Game Pass mm-hmm. and they're not recovering, I think they'll always at least recover the amount of money that goes into making the games. Because I think that's at this point you probably do that every month. Every month equ- equals to like what they would spend on the development mm-hmm. of a game. But if they're not making money in the overall logistic of things, there's not a lot of options that would go in there. Are they going to continue to just break and eat, break even? And that's me giving them the option that they might be breaking even. Maybe they're not even breaking even. Like how long? That that's why. Like as much as it's exciting to see like stuff shift in the industry with like mm-hmm. you know uh, Xbox buying you know Activision Blizzard King and mm-hmm. Blizzard and and you know uh, Bethesda. You know, these billions of dollars, they're not going to want this soon. They're not going to want, it's a long-term thing, but eventually they're going to want to see those numbers go up. You know, why would I spend $70 billion on ABK when I didn't hit the milestones for what that was bought for? Yeah. And Um, and that's, that, that's what I'm saying. If, if it's a clear that the industry just isn't moving in the subscription model, what do you think their options are? Because I don't think there's a lot of options in that world. It's like, um, I, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I, I find it hard to see them going back on it to selling games in a market where, um, you got to consider inflation, uh, the cost of games are increasing. They're at an opportune time where at, at some point, you know, game pass is just, I think game pass is going to hit its apex at some point. I don't think it's hit its apex yet. Um, I think like we're in the point we got to see how literally this the next uh two years ago right starfield was like the first major big uh release since you know since halo infinite but technically halo infinite doesn't count because the multiplayer was pretty much free for all um you i think with they got to see what happens with starfield and then obviously their what's their next major release um what's going to be their next major release that's the thing and then they got to understand how to to treat that i don't see a situation now that they bought into game pass and the reason why they bought all these studios and publishers because of game pass i don't see a way that they um that they um you know fall back from it i think what happens worst case scenario is like the worst case scenario is like they if they somehow land on like freaking PlayStation and Nintendo and stuff like that, which uh, game <laughs> it, and they become truly like a third party, you know, app. Um, you, you think that they would go third party before they try to get rid of Game Pass? Yeah, I, I feel you on that. I just think to me, I'll stand on this hill. Is you give good games, it doesn't matter what backlash that shit has. It doesn't matter what you know. That we could literally find out that the industries ran by like some of those evil people in the world. The Illuminati. <laughs> it's at no one's going to care. It, you give me good games sooner or later. They're going to, all that's going to go to the abyss. How, how often does bad, bad stuff happen? And then the next time a game comes out, it don't even have to be a good game. Just any game. No one's talking about that bad news anymore. And now look, obviously this is, catastrophic news mm. but if you announce you know the Elder Scrolls 6 gameplay for the first time right after that and Fable like they announced that right before E3 and then they show you all this bomb ass gameplay at E3 be honest if they got rid of Game Pass it would that be the last straw for you would you abandon the Xbox brand if they got rid of Game Pass why abandon Xbox mm-hmm I don't think it just so. went back to like like the the a la carte that you buy your, the games you want to play. Um that would be tough. It it, it would have a catastrophic event cuz it it already ha- has an impact on consumer um it, has, it already has an impact on how I'm consuming games and how my family consumes games. Like because of Game Pass I have multiple consoles uh, in the house and you know like and we're paying for otherwise that would go be buying one product like we would have to like end our game sharing because i would have to game share with my kids <laughs> and, 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 and i feel you on that and i think just to me 
it, it's just like I don't want this to happen. I it, this is more about you know a good a good conversation. I just feel like people are capping when they say, "Oh, and people will be pissed mm-hmm. for a couple of weeks." People are going to talk shit, mm-hmm. but they drop a hard and this this is this is on the fact that they they get their shit together and they drop Starfield type of quality every time. And I yeah. get it. People say it's an eighty three. I don't care if they drop that type of game that changes the the uh, the narrative on the internet. People mm-hmm. are talking about it. If they did that consistently every three months and I just find it hard to believe to me that it that people are just gonna say, "Oh, you ain't you took Game Pass, so well, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying Elder Scrolls Six. I'm not buying Hellblade Two. I'm not buying a Valve. Like I find that hard to believe. No, um, true. Um, yeah, I don't think anybody's gonna boycott like buy, gonna just decide not to buy games without it. Again, it's it, again, it, it's it's really tough to, um, it's a, it's a tough thing uh, to imagine because since Game Pass came into the market, it's created it, it it's created other devices. You know, like the G Cloud exists and the Aces Rogue Ally exists because there's a Game Pass. Literally, like they they literally they they have guaranteed software, so. I, again, sure, it hasn't hit its apex yet. We don't know when it's going to hit its apex or what that number's got to be. It's just that I don't see them abandoning it, the idea. It's hard. As, it, the thing is, is that it's because Microsoft don't, you know, they're not all in on selling consoles and stuff. It'd be different if they was trying to be like PlayStation and sell 100 million consoles every, every time out the gate. Um, but they can't. They can't do that. And... Um, I would understand if they were doing that, understandable. Like I could see PlayStation abandoning in PlayStation Plus, right? Um, they're literally self-sabotaging it by raising this shit like forty dollars, which is crazy. And they don't even put their first party games in here. Um, I think um I, I, I don't know, man. I I don't know if I can see or cope with the idea that Microsoft would do it. I don't think it ends well. Sure, will people get over it? Absolutely. Will, will it go make cause microsoft to go bankrupt absolutely not um again it's just xbox is the only consumer product left that microsoft has that's semi-successful and there's an opportunity there's an area opportunities for it they just have to execute they could use some help on the marketing and they could use some help on releasing these con uh, the, the first party content a lot quicker um and making it quality um but uh again i don't see them uh, abandoning 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 the game pass ship okay uh speaking of though so uh unity having uh all sorts of issues with developers a lot of people are considering a lot of developers consider dropping engine because it looks like they're trying to get a payout when every console every uh digital game they sell or install or downloads they get um there they also made a comment on like you know with you know developers with games being installed via game pass and playstation plus they kind of assume microsoft would be eating the bill for that and sony like like how you have you i don't even think they assumed i i I think they i think they panicked (laughs) and and, you know because i'm sure they i'm sure it's been code red over there since this got announced I think it was like one of those scenarios. I kind of remember like the cyberpunk thing where people are like, well, what am I supposed to? You're supposed to call Microsoft. <laughs> you know, if you want the refund, you got to call Microsoft. Yeah. They, they'll, they'll handle that. And it's like PlayStation's like, the, the fuck we will. Like, so it, I think that's what happened there. It, it's interesting that they haven't, that they haven't like pulled this back yet. Uh, yeah, that makes me think they're not going to. Nah, they they does like we gotta get paid. It's a yeah. Unity is the second most popular engine behind Unreal Engine, right? Or probably more popular since you know Unity's been around since two thousand five. A lot of independent uh, developers use it. Even some double A AA and triple A games use it. It's a very you know scalable engine. Um, very popular among uh, video games, and I think for a while it's been like fairly, I think free, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but um, they 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 want some get back 
because it's a popular engine. Games are selling very felt relatively well. A lot of games that are selling um, are you use the Unity engine, and they they want they want to cut. And um, I think what the the, the situation is, uh, they said that would um, they would charge like a fee of about maybe let's say twenty cents uh per download or something like that it's it said it said charge would only kick in once a game hit a certain number of downloads but could be as much as 20 cents at the top level this generated a quick angry response they, they tripping over 20 cents 20 cents all right let's say if your game uh sells 200 that's not a lot why are they tripping Two hundred thousand. okay for every game they sell, uh, sell they was like Let's say maybe they hit like a 50,000 threshold. Maybe it's probably either a 50,000 or 100,000 threshold where they start um, charging at uh, 20 cents. Um, uh, but developers are accusing the company of violating their trust and raise questions about how the charge would be applied. In, partic in particular, developers worried about being charged for installations of pirate copies and potential effects that being promoted on a subscription service like Microsoft Game Pass could have because you got to think about it. I mean, a million people could download your game on Game Pass. <laughs> like uh, Unity was forced to issue a statement clarifying that some conditions of its new fees and insisted the majority of developers wouldn't be affected, but that will also that was also heavily uh, criticized. So they got some smoke. You know, a lot of people you got uh, isn't among us. You know, mm -hmm. running on Unity. So it's called the Lambs. Yeah, they got yeah they got some problems over there. Uh, the dude um, the dude that runs Unity or the CEO did he work for like uh, EA or some shit like that before? I don't know, but apparently like it was pretty bad the stuff he was saying. Like he he's not their f be best friend currently. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, it sucks for them. It sucks to suck. Um, I'm, 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 we got, we're pretty much closing in on, uh, over an hour, which is pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, what I wanted to say is I never finished cyberpunk 2077 and since beating Starfield a couple of times, I actually want to give cyberpunk 2077 a, a real chance. Have you played cyberpunk? I started it. But then I dropped it, and I'm kind of glad I dropped it because I feel like mm -hmm. now when I play it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna appreciate it more. Yeah, I think that's what it is too. Because I dropped it fairly early. I might actually just start a brand new game altogether. Um, because like I'm, I'm completely lost. I'm gonna start a whole new game, and the, the I the thing is, is like game like Phantom Liberty. I assume you should have either you got to beat the game or you should have beat the game before doing that, right? Um, for the expansion. I don't know um it's probably i know when does phantom liberty come out um um the 26th i believe all right so can i beat uh cyberpunk in 10 days um well what's why do you need it done in 10 days i want to beat it before phantom liberty comes out um i would wait why uh because apparently phantom liberty changes a lot of core aspects of uh of the game so i would wait for those core aspects oh oh so it makes it a better game okay yeah i would just wait all right all right play play more play more starfield starfield <laughs> i love starfield or you can make content on youtube yeah i could i'm probably gonna do a video after this all right guys Let's get out of here. Um, I got a bug addict for some uh, thumbnails. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming through Planet Xbox episode six, six, uh, ugh, 17, watching a, a podcast. Look out for some of the crew Motor Fest coverage from me on the Chanto, on the Chanto, on the Smooth Channel. Um, also, some start more Starfield uh, videos. I'm probably going to brag about how I think it's game of the year again. And uh, yeah, man. Thank you guys for watching. It's not my game of the year. I, I still want to get at the Boulders Gate, but it's definitely... <laughs> it definitely deserves a contender spot. I will say that. It definitely deserves a contender spot. I just really enjoy Boulders Gate, like, a lot. Fair enough. Fair enough. I ain't mad at it. Wow. You can beat Cyberpunk main story in 25 hours? 
Shit, start. Uh, okay. So, what? Really? Mm hmm. Oh, uh, I mean, it's possible. All right, main, and then you include the side quest, you get another like probably 30, 40 hours and stuff like that. Mm, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes, man. Appreciate it, Attic. Another episode done. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to Weapon Will, Weapon Will Patreon. Subscribe to the channel. Check out Iron Lord's podcast. We got any sneak peeks for the show this week? Um, we're gonna have Peter Moore on. Um, not this, uh, not today, but the following week. Okay, having him back on. Um, part two. Also, yeah. Also. I guess I'll save uh, the Spider-Man thing for right now. Uh, you know, it's going to be brief little rant. Please, please here's, do it. Here's the thing. I made the statement because I just noticed it. I wasn't complaining. I wasn't saying I'm going to play it. I just saw it, so I made a statement on it. But you know what's crazy, Smooth? A lot of these people that's that comes at me over like this particular statement, mm-hmm. I bet you if you put the playstation first party exclusives side by side or not even just playstation exclusives in general Mm -hmm. side by side i've beat more than they have Mm -hmm. so i just find it hilarious that people that don't play games half the time criticize me Mm -hmm. because i nitpicked something you know at the end of the day i saw people because that tweet went kind of viral Mm -hmm. i saw people Putting like math up to why the 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 windows that high up wouldn't be broke by a big ass jeep hitting it, and and that's not an ordinary jeep. That looked like a yeah, military a military jeep. SUV. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, but apparently, me just asking, yo, why isn't that like the little dent that it was making? Kind of felt like it sh- that should have been the lizard's dents. Yeah. But it is what it is. I just I just find it hilarious that, you know, people sit there, they'll say Attic doesn't do he doesn't criticize Xbox. And it's like you don't watch my content. Mm-hmm. You know, if anything, people say I criticize Xbox too much. You know, uh, for the longest time, I didn't have a whole lot of success because I criticize Xbox too much. You know, I I give a, a perspective, a unique perspective, someone that likes Japanese uh, role-playing games and you know i saw that and i was just like look like it wasn't a big deal to me i never expected the, the tweet to to get as much traction as it did i mean mm-hmm. that uh uh um uh, megan cleef or whatever his name is mm-hmm. uh mighty uh mighty keith yeah. he commented on it and it's just like it's like i just saw it and just said yo why I didn't do damage but one would think that i was shit talking the game and that and then i thought about it smooth you know what you know what these fanboys are scared of, right? What's that? That my tweet is the catalyst, is the first in line to the slander Spider-Man will get. <laughs> and, and, and what's funny is like I had people that was blowing up the video and putting red boxes mm-hmm. around the, the damaged uh parts of the building. And ho- hold up, let me I'll bring this up. I don't know if you could see it smooth, but let me, uh, they probably won't be able to see it, but let me show you this screen. So here is, uh, I, oh, it's actually what Mighty Kiff did. See the, see this crack here. See it? No, oh, let me put this in. Yeah, yeah. This is what this Jeep did. <laughs> that, the, the Jeep should have actually went through the this, building. This is what that Jeep did. And people people want to sit there and tell me that a, a military Jeep, and it looks like there's a gun on it too. You just can't see it from this angle. You would tell me that this did this. And you know, you know what's the biggest issue? Motherfuckers had to pause it to see it. <laughs> you had to pause this to see this damage. And what's funny, Smooth, how many times have I told you that I believe Spider-Man about to be lit. Yeah. I've said it multiple times on ILP. I've said it on Weapon Will. 
I've said it a variety of times because I think there's no way that they they can possibly drop the ball with having Miles, mm -hmm. having uh, Peter Parker, and having Venom in one game. But I guess that doesn't matter, you know. People on Twitter are the most cherry picking people I've ever seen in my life. They'll they'll cherry pick the stuff I criticize PlayStation about and forget all about the times I criticize Xbox. Where's Starfield gameplay? Remember when King's Posse pulled up on me because I was upset mm -hmm. that E3 that I didn't see no Starfield gameplay and me and King went at it on ILP because of it? Yeah. Forget yeah. that. That didn't happen. Remember when Avowed was revealed and I said I didn't like the art style because it looked a little bit false advertising to me because that's not what they portrayed when mm -hmm. the game was officially revealed? Yeah. Forgetting all about that. But, and you want to get technical, I fought harder over that shit than I did this. I didn't make a video. This is the second time I've addressed it because I addressed it a little bit on, on Luca's show. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you watch my content, you know I criticize Xbox. I criticize, if anything, the people I don't criticize Nintendo because I know they don't care. Yeah. So it, it's just funny, man. You know, and it's like I said on, on Luca. I found out a long time ago, it doesn't matter what I do. Some of you have already, uh, you know, decided what you want to think of me, regardless if it's a, if, if, if it's because of the Xbox brand, the people I socialize with, or just because, you know, I'm not a dick mm -hmm. and attack every developer known to man. People honestly think that unless you call a developer like all kinds of names, or because of a game, you're not being real. <laughs> and I just disagree. You know, you you can easily get your point across without sounding like an asshole. And it is what it is. You guys make that decision. I'm sure people in the comment section will will, will have all kinds of things to say about it. But that's all I'm going to say about it. No, no. I mean... Oh, and I got this finally. The, yeah, the hold the line. Code. Where's my hold the line? Code? Yeah. Hold the line. There we go. Uh, I don't think it's going to focus on it because it's not enough light. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to focus a little bit. Um, yeah, the, um, no, you're, you ask a legit question. Um, and people, any, the thing is, they post things about Spider Man in the game. This is, this is the thing I hate about the, uh, the whole PlayStation fanboys and the whole nonsense, right? I didn't watch the play. I had to work, whatever. I didn't care. I I, I watched the recap. It was, it was it was okay. I liked it. I watched. The I liked Iron better than the Nintendo show. I watched the Iron Lords recap, but you. Oh, uh, King thought it was dog shit. <laughs> I mean, there was there was a couple standouts. The standout was Spider Man and Final Fantasy, but both. Yeah, and if anything, I'm a sent towards Final Fantasy. Yeah. And both, like, but both those games we saw at previous showcases, they were previously announced, right? Obviously. Um, that's that's what king's thing was yeah. like this isn't new stuff but here's the thing like i told king just like i told on there i can't attack a company that that kept you expectations in check by telling you first party's not going to really be here this is going to be third party yeah. an indie uh, dedicated show that's what to expect here i can't attack them for telling me where to look yeah you know if they didn't say nothing it was like that fiasco with a couple years ago of Aaron Greenberg, you know, not defining what gameplay was. Mm -hmm. That was different because I felt like they set expectations wrong. Mm -hmm. PlayStation set the expectations up. So if you went into this and you was upset that they didn't show first party stuff after they told you there weren't going to be first party stuff, I feel like that's more of a you problem than them problem. Yeah. They, 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 yeah, they gave an expectation. So I didn't bother to uh, watch it. And the, the two, two biggest games that were there were Spider Man and Final Fantasy. Dear, I, I know what Spider Man is. I know what. The, there's nothing, I guess, new for me to see. I know how Spider Man is going to play. I know it's going how it's going to look. I same thing with Final Fantasy VII. So remake, whatever. It's rebirth, rebirth, whatever. It's, just, it's like whatever. Okay, cool. Um, the thing about them is that they woke up because I guess the gameplay previews came out for because people have access to the game. Uh, to it was weird that Spider Man was there when. Literally the next day, a preview went out. Like, yeah. so they had the previews come out, 
and people are, you know, they're masturbating to it um, and stuff like that. But the thing is, is that all free every post I saw about Spider Man wasn't about oh how great Spider Man is going to be or I'm happy I can't wait for Spider Man. It's literally how much better it is than Starfield or this Xbox game or that Xbox game. Like, dude, you guys can't. I was like, that tells me you're not really all that excited. Is that you just needed new information to compare to Starfield because you got sick of Starfield running with all the headlines. Like, like why? It's like, if you're really, truly interested in Spider-Man, uh, be happy for the freaking game. Like, why does, like, Spider-Man have to solidify or justify your hate for, like, Xbox or, like, Starfield? It makes no sense to me. Now, in terms of the things is that people, after all the brutal bullshit they've been talking about Starfield and Xbox and doing all these screen capping, all these videos and talking points, they sit there and they want to tweet about, you know, Spider-Man, how great it looks, right? But then they want to bring a fucking artillery to anybody that finds anything negative wrong with Spider-Man after the, the brutal thing they've been doing for literally what felt like a month now of their attacks on Starfield. Now we can't say anything about Spider-Man or we can only praise it. I can't stand how entitled PlayStation fanboys are. So you ask about like there's no damage coming off of because of the truck smacking against a skyscraper uh where you got a jot you got like a a, a 30 foot lizard uh you got a m military suv strapped to this lizard scaling this building and my thing is that you, you know it's funny mm -hmm. for the they say that but that crane had no problem fucking up that skyscraper in the first one yeah yes so the thing is is that you're saying where's the damage? They they point to a, a still shot where the, the the windows are cracked and stuff like that. But we consider when you consider what's knocking against the the building. My opinion is that it should be going through the building, just like you know. Obviously, like I mean, I know you know. I mean, obviously, we saw like I mean, it's the the, the anniversary or whatever. Um, of like um you know 9 11 obviously a vehicle is not a plane but they when you consider a mass of that stature the thing should be going and, and now i'm not going to sit there me personally I, that wasn't the first thing i thought of i'm not going to be judging it or whatever but i can understand why you ask because you you got to consider what's knocking against the building it's a big ass military suv and it's the only thing it's doing is cracking and you had to pause the screen to see that it cracked uh, a couple mirrors. Like, and, and and I do agree the damage that should be cracking the mirror should have been the lizard because it, it's big enough to at least crack the mirror, mirror by running and scaling the building. But um, otherwise, man, I think the, the cool thing that they're doing with Spider-Man and, and, and Insomniac is living by living and dying by the ray tracing and, and, and being able to harness the power of the PlayStation. Um, they got three performance. They got three modes, 30, 40, 60, all the games running ray tracing by default. There's no non retracing non retracing mode, which is cool. If you like that stuff, me, this generation, um, uh, ray tracing has been an underperformer for all games with the exception of, I want to say uh, Spider-Man. So this is a cool idea. I'm looking forward to Forza. I know it has a performance ray tracing mode and, and their ray tracing is uh, looking good and they're doing some trickery there. But, you know, shout out to Spider-Man. Like, I, again, I'm hype. Uh, I, no, I can't say I'm hype. For, I'm looking forward to Spider-Man. I'm not hype for it. It's not something I can wait for it because the problem is I, I'll be lying if I say I can't wait to play Spider-Man after literally playing Spider-Man. I feel like I played Spider-Man three or four times in the last... Three, three or four years. I mean, I played 2018 on PlayStation, uh, played Miles Morales on PS5, played Remastered on PC, and uh, Miles Morales again on a, a, a freaking um, PlayStation and, and PC. And it's it hasn't gotten old yet. So I know what I'm getting from uh, Spider-Man. Uh, I know it's going to be good. Um, and, you know, I prayed. I mean, I <laughs> I, I hope it's I hope it's good for the sake of a uh, uh, PlayStation fanboys, but I think it's gonna be great. Um, and but the thing is, I just, thing I don't want to hear is like people comparing it to Starfield. These games are like totally different, but people keep comparing them because I don't know. Maybe PlayStation didn't release a game all year, and this is I guess 
they got this to compare it to. And um and, but I'm looking forward to Forza. It comes out in a couple weeks, so yeah. Okay. But yeah, shout out to them though. Hopefully the slander ends attic. Maybe I don't know, you do an apology video or some shit like that, or the next thing PlayStation shows, you'll you know do some good on it and all be forgiven because PlayStation fans love it. You when, know what's funny? What's up? <laughs> These people hate me now. There's a chance I might get a Spider-Man review. <laughs> you get oh how much, man. How much salt? If I get a Spider-Man review code, and I'm a blast of the shit out of that on Twitter. Cause it's just like, dude, like I just asked a genuine question. Like it I had people like DM me uh and stuff. It is what it is. I'm not gonna go too much into it. Yeah, it's all right. People are overly sensitive about uh, their, their their precious games. Like again, I'm crazy for reacting to Starfield. Why are you mad at other people's opinion? But if we if I apply the same logic and criticism that people applied on Starfield to a Spider Man, they would get just as mad or matter. So that's the that's the podcast, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Shout out to Attic. Shout out to, shout out to Iron Lord's podcast. Shout out to BG Weapon Will. Planet Xbox. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best spot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace. Gotta play the intro.